my opinion, I think Nagy could have been world-class. He had all the qualities. He was, he was quick, sharp-witted, good reflexes, a decent hitter, and he could hit you with either hand. And he had a very, very good jab. The only thing with him, of course, he used to lose his temper and go ragged, or go on the missing list and come back and have no coordination. But when he wanted to do it and he prepared, he could look really, really good. Najib Daho was a boxer of undisputed talent but of erratic performance. Brave and single-minded in the ring, enigmatic and distracted by the high life out of it. A pro since 1977, it wasn't until eight years later, Daho's career got on the right tracks when he fought Liverpool's Kevin Pritchard for the vacant central area title. Seconds ticking away must seem like hours now, Jim, for these fellas in the last round with a minute to go. Yeah, it's been a tremendous pace all the way through. I think Daho is feeling the pace a little bit more than Pritchard at this stage. I think he needed a big round to put it beyond doubt. Then he comes back again. What a tremendous fight. I tell you what, it's getting to be a habit on this, isn't it? The Fight Night series. Half a minute. And the winner now goes on to possible bit of glory there and uh, who knows he could finish up with Pat Cordell he may have Pat Doherty of Croydon another nomination for this nine stone four pounds championship now it's vacant the British championship and it's two-handed to the finish what a good contest now which way is it going and it's Daho gets it and family running into the ring as I thought they might. It looks like, I presume, his young brother. And you were right, Jim. He just uh, took over so well in the last part. There's a marvellously, I'm nearly going to say neutral crowd. They're, they're applauding like a good neutral crowd for the contest. And jubilation there. Well, the lad they call the Caspar kid, the, the chef from Manchester. With the title came confidence and recognition. Two clear points wins followed when Daho decisioned local fighters Sammy Mech and Edward Lloyd over 10 and 8 rounds respectively in Manchester to earn a long-awaited shot of Pat Cowdell's British super featherweight title. After nearly 10 years in the business, Najib was beginning to fulfill the potential manager Jack Triggett always knew was there. I met him in the free trade hall, watched him box in the free trade hall about three years before I managed him. And I said to him then that he had great talent, but he had no stamina because he never trained. And uh, about three years later, he came to me and asked me to manage him. And he was the only man, he was the only boxer I had, and he won the British title. And he never believed really, I don't think, that he was going to win it till maybe a couple of fights before. And then he was, when he fought Pat Cowdell, he was ever so confident. He was really genuinely confident he was going to win. A 12-round super featherweight contest of three minutes each round at a match made at nine stone four pound for the super featherweight championship of Great Britain. Between and in addition to you, the super featherweight champion of Great Britain from Birmingham, Pat Caldwell. And in this corner, the challenger from Manchester, Najib Daho. At the weigh-in, Cowdell scaled nine stone four pound. Daho scaled nine stone three pound. The officials with this contest 
appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, your referee, Mr. Roland Dakin of Reading, your timekeeper, John Burns of Southport, and your steward in charge, Mr. Dennis Lockton of Manchester. Manchester lad to win the championship was Frank Johnson back in 55 against Joe Lucy. Oh, I remember it well. So then the opening round scheduled as the Master Assembly said for 12. Oh, what do you know about this? I don't believe this one. Held down on the deck with the first punch of the fight. Unbelievable. It happened with Azuna Nelson, but Dahoe's not known for it. This is unbelievable, the crowd rushing up against the ropes. And very much the underdog, although the more experienced Moroccan from Manchester. That's the first time that Caldell has been up and down like a yo-yo in his whole career. It was one punch that did it in the World Championship. He came back and won the British, and now can he get through this round? He's really shoving him a bit. This is unbelievable because he's not really known as a great puncher. He's only stopped seven opponents out of 48, Daho. Have you ever seen a start like this, Jim, with Caldell of all people? Reg, I don't know how Caldell is managing to stay up upright. These punches are bang on target. There goes another one, bang on to the chin. But there's nothing wrong with Caldell's chin if he can take these punches. But I don't see how we can get through this round. He's getting his thinking back together again. He's trying to get his jab working. His concentration is coming back slightly, but he's in terrible trouble. Oh, the left hook again there. As I said, the crowd encroached in the ring a little bit. And not surprisingly, but I wonder if the old general can fight his way back. If he does, what a feat that will be. Charts of Daho, Daho. What a fight back now by the champion. Unbelievable, this. I've been watching Caldell since his amateur bantamweight days, and apart from a one punch with Azuma Nelson, he's never been in trouble like this before. Which is how he's going to see the round out, Jim. Yeah, he's got himself back together again. Oh, there he goes. That, he's still looking for Daho. He knows where he is, but he's in, still in terrible trouble. I think this is probably about the bravest round of Pat Cadell's long career. I don't know how he managed to see his way this far into the round. Must seem like eternity now to Caldwell. This is the longest three minutes he's ever been in. Oh, and it, it looks as though he's going to get counted out. Even the bell came to the rescue. The crowd have invaded the ring. This should not be happening. They cannot no. crown the champion. They're trying to throw him out now. I don't know what's going to happen here because if the bell had gone, the referee has every right to say that this ring has been unfairly invaded. No, he hasn't. He's actually stopped the fight. Tell me about the, the Pat Gaudel fight, the first fight in 86 when he became British champion. I mean, clearly then, everything must have been right. Must Absol have been. He did tra He trained really hard and he really believed in it. Uh, and it was the easiest one to train for. I used to pick him up and take him home. And he did actually train, did everything that he wanted, sparred, and he was so confident he, would, <clears throat> he wouldn't hear of defeat, and I, could, I knew Najib Dao as well as any of his family, and I knew he really meant it, and my pals didn't think he was going to win, and I said, don't be surprised if he doesn't do him in the first round, and we tried to stop him in the first round, and if not to stop him, 
to hurt him that bad that Nadji had win. And it came off, just one of those things. Daho's reward for his one-round demolition of Cowdell was a crack at the IBF World Super Featherweight title against Aussie hardman Barry Michael, an experienced and durable fighter, but a man Daho had once beaten back in 1979. But despite this psychological boost, Daho was in deep against a very competent champion. But still, it was a dream come true, from the small hall to the big stage and a chance of fame and glory in front of his hometown fans, who turned out in numbers to roar him on. Barry Michael was a terrific fighter, and most people didn't recognise how good he was. But then Barry McGuigan didn't fancy fighting him. What do you remember specifically about the, the Barry Michael fight? Nadji's bravery, really. I mean, he had little else but bravery going for him after about the fifth round. Well, already there, feeling a bit like a winner, isn't he? Family. All on his side, obviously, the Barry Michaels got his wife, and that's about all. And uh, a pretty flag carrier there, Eileen from uh, Liverpool. I'm afraid he didn't give her a glance because uh, Sandy, who partly manages uh, Barry Michaels, watching, there's Barry Michael there wearing the Australian Rules jersey. And it is, of course, the International Boxing Federation, the first time that that particular body has had a championship fight recognised or taking place in this country because the Boxing Board of Control have not officially joined that uh, group yet. So if styles count, these two should have a humbling or it'll be head-to-head -head stuff, I promise you that. They fought in Wales, and between them they only got 520 pounds, and I can tell you, this is the biggest purse this afternoon they've ever earned. It's a big one. And Daho won that fight on points. the first round, I mean, having had that incredible success with Pat Cowdell, there's no doubt that uh, Daho is going to try and get off early. But uh, 12 rounds course, it has been cut to 12 rounds, which is now the standard in this country. The RBF agreed to do that. They normally have 15. Now, he's never been on the deck, Barry Michael. That's a tremendous record, but the way he's taking punches here, it could happen. Very popular fighter in uh, Manchester, Daho. He's, he's called nicknamed the Casper Kid. And, uh, for a while, the new manager, Jack Trickett, who sort of transformed him, as it were, so they should have called him the Disco Kid when he started boxing because he didn't really train that well. side and he's taken advantage of any encouragement going his way in the opening round Aho. Amazing how Barry Michael who has actually fought right up to welterweights over the 10 stone mark and he's now down to nine stone two and a half almost a featherweight which is nine stone. They're not larking about in the opening round I tell you that in the coming up the last minute of this round Jim. Now this is a good start, a good start from Daho too. I think the main thing he has to do, try to keep Michael on his back foot and keep his own elbows nice and tight to his ribcage because Michael seems to, his plan seems to be to spend the first couple of rounds banging about the body. All the powerful punches Michael has thrown so far have been towards the ribcage. But a very good start from Daho. Philadelphian referee here, Rudy Battle.
So it's a real good start, this, there's no doubt about it. As Jim Watt said, it's a good start by Naho. But he is Barry Michael, from what we've seen of him, he takes his time getting off. There you are, there's the statistics, as I said, he hasn't been on the deck and uh, still managing to keep those gold teeth intact. A great talker, he talks about being a great motivator, Barry Michael, and uh, goes around and does a bit of public speaking, knows the statistics of the fight game, he knows the background. Najib Daho, most of those losses actually came early on in his career. He was uh, bowled over by Ken Buchanan, former lightweight champion of the world, but, uh, well, that could happen to anybody with a fight of that quality. So, Ernie Fossey from London, they've got in the corner, They've uh, Kenny Daniels, his normal trainer, Jack Trickett on the outside there, adding his little percentage worth of advice. Second out, round two. Into the second round and almost before the bell had gone away there, they were at it. I told you that uh, that's the way these guys have to fight. They're, there's no hit and run among these two. It's got to be a stand and trade fight, whatever happens. In world terms, we've never kidded anybody that they're great names, but it had to be a really hard fight because both of them are very experienced. You don't often get that. Sometimes get championship fights before they've paid their dues, but these fellas have done it. Yes, he's a good body puncher, Barry Michael. He likes to bring the, the hands down and uh, wear the opponents down a bit, the old wars of attrition. Well, there's going to be some bumps some bruises of battle, I think, soon, Jim, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a hard afternoon to work for both of them. Michael's physically very strong. You can see inside the leverage he gets into the punches, even when he's off balance. He's good arm strength. He's a, a very strong little man. Uh, when you're boxing someone who's not known as a smart performer, the best thing you can do is keep him on his back foot. Don't let him get set. And Daho will have to do that with Michael. He can't allow Michael to dictate things to do. Well, it seems as though Daho's corner have been telling him to work on that straight left because uh, Michael doesn't defend himself that well and uh, eats a few of those on the way in. But no, he slipped those, didn't he? That shows the old experience coming in. A little bit of bloodied nose there on Daho. As I said to Jim Watt, there is uh, obviously going to be a few scars showing in a minute because with this rough type of type of contest, it's inevitable. So half a minute to go then in the second. about Barry Michael he's been around so much shit, so he doesn't worry about home advantage he, he really is the old uh, corny line about have gum shield will travel this fellow said scheduled for 12 and in case you've just to understand in the white trunks Ajib Daho the Moroccan uh, from Manchester now of course and Barry Michael from Australia with Michael defending his International Boxing Federation version of the super or the low punch super featherweight title now they won't disqualify a fighter unless it's persistent fouling 
So he can give uh, Daho a fair amount of time if he wants to recover. They're wearing the obligatory foul-proof protectors, remember. And with an American referee, he's uh, just gives him severe warnings and the, the judges can, in fact, take a point away if so desired. He normally would uh, nominate that to the judges. He may do it at the end of the round. But we don't want to see that happen. No foul rule, but only persistent low punching or any other uh, infringement could lose a fight like uh, lose a championship like that. Well, they've forgotten that little. Uh, bother there, Najib Daho, Jim, and uh, obviously the, the family jewels are okay again. Yeah, well, there was a low punch there, thankfully. Daho didn't make too much of it, he got his breath back and back into it again. Daho, his act has improved a little bit last round and this round. Uh, he seems to have got his attitude back, back together again, thankfully. We've got a minute to go in the fifth. Three minute duration, of course, boxing and championship contests. And the moment this match was made, Jim, I thought, well, I want to, want to see that one, whatever happens, because it, there was no way that it was not going to be a good fight. And yeah, I so probably... All the makings have been a cracker. Uh, Neither of these boys like to take too many back steps. We reckon beforehand that Michael would be a little bit stronger than Daho. But uh, Daho's holding his own now, thankfully. But uh, I think inside, Michael's still a little bit stronger, still managing to bully Daho a bit. Yeah, it's all about, really, when we get to the second half of the fight, I think, now. Staying power and uh, the usual durability come into play then. Bloodied nose or not, he seemed very pleased with his uh, round there, Daho. And there's uh, referee Rudy Battle who collects the three judges' uh, scores and then uh, takes them to the supervisor or adjudicator, in this case, Mr. Robert Lee, who's also the president of the IBF. There you are, along there. And they check each round, so uh, you can't get any altering of scorecards or because they're all, all handed in after each round. Now you can sense from the chat in that corner that we can just about hear Jim uh, that they're a bit concerned. They want him to go out and win a round or two now, Daho. Well, Daho, Daho needs a big there. round. He's not had a big round since the first. See, here we are again. We'll see what happens in this little bit. Let's go around. Let's, let's get well, a nice little burst from Daho. Down. See, he keeps the punches round going. Stop making on his tracks. This is what he has to do. But Daho Into needs the a big round. Into the ninth. Scheduled again, as I said, for 12 rounds. And uh, Barry Michael, he really, he can really fight all night. He's had six 15-round fights. And as I say, a total before this one of 472 pro rounds. And altogether, 21 fights involving a title of some sort. Commonwealth, Australian, and world. gladiators here and there's a, in particular Michael he, he, he seems to revel in it doesn't he Jim got, he's got that confident look about him when he's in there yeah well he, he's so used to this I'd imagine every one of his fights are like this when the referee broke them he just took a big deep breath through his mouth and then put his head down and back into it again he's quite happy doing this uh, if the fight carries on with this till the 12th round he'll be quite happy he'll be quite happy to go home with his title 
that was the man who has to change what's going on. Well, yeah, as you say, going home. In fact, it, uh, he's going to hang around in Britain for quite a while if he can, Barry Michael. And as I said, he'd love to be able to lure Barry McGuigan uh, to come up into this weight and challenge him for the World Championship. So a minute to go then in the ninth. Oh, it's a hard fight this close. So this close as Jim White and I are, are at the ringside, you could really feel those bunches coming in, I tell you. to the body like that. And Daho trying to give it to him back as well. So they really showing the signs of wear and tear as we come up for the bell in this round. And the big smile yet again from Barry Michael. And there's uh, some family supporters, obviously, of Najib Daho, the only one... In about the ninth round, come back to the corner, and he was looking a bit of a mess. And Ernie Fossey was in the corner with me, and he said... He'd said everything he could think of, and he said, Come on, Najib. He said, Listen to the crowd. The crowd's with you. Come on, man. Najib looked up. Big eye and big lips. And, you know, I wish I was with the crowd. <laughs> I think that stands me. Stands out in my mind, and he he was that cool in the corner. He was just like coming home and having a cup of tea. He never got excited in the corner. Well, the old man seems quite pleased with the boys' goings on there, doesn't he? Second down in the corner. Round eleven. Round eleven. I, I must say, I did fancy this fight to go to full distance, and they're so gutsy, and uh, they deserve to, don't they? Not a yep. question of lacking punching powers that they absorbed them so well. I've got to say, if it was a 15 rounder, I, I think around about now, Daho would be getting to lose heart and maybe start getting out of it. But being it's just a 12 rounder, only two rounds to go, you'll probably grit his teeth and force himself on. But he's having a real tough time. He's badly in need of a bit of success. He hasn't really had any today. He's never been able to, to put a dent in Michael at any time. He's been under constant pressure from the second round onwards. And uh, he really he needs a knockout to win the fight, as far as I'm concerned. He's a great come-from-behind fighter, Barry Mark. He's shown that in nearly all of his uh, Australian and Asian and Commonwealth Championship fights. He sometimes lets the other fella get off a bit lively, but he comes in at the finish. Oh, and a good right hand, and the, the crowd knew it. And Mike will certainly do it, but he'll come straight back in. It's incredible. Doesn't back off at all. That's exactly what I mean, Reg. That's as good a right hand that Daho can manage at this stage in a, in a hard fight. And it didn't even put a dent in Michael. He takes the punch, comes right on and lands his own punches. So I really don't know what Daho's going to be able to do. Go the distance and uh, lose honourably in points, I think, is the best he can hope for. Well, time to go, as they say, Jim, in this game, one punch can change it all, can't it? Change the old mathematics. Yeah, but that was a good shot from Daho, and it was bang on target, and it didn't even shake Michael in the least. So no, what well, else is he going to do? No, exactly, and the fact that he hasn't never been on the canvas in his life, uh, this hand will take something exceptional now to do it. Well, we talk about some of the old timers that some of us read about with perpetual motion, but that's uh, what Barry Michael's shown us this afternoon. It's always nice oh, when Phil looks as though he was just about to go down there, Jim. 
Yep, his legs give a little twist there. Well, there's the countdown clock. He's running out of time in this round, although the bell would not interrupt the count. If he did go down, the crowd cheering go on, stay in there and survive in this round at least. And the must have seemed to a long walk back to that corner. He really did look battle weary there. So there's this punch coming in. Have a look at this, Jim. Yeah, it was a good shot. He sees legs. He did well to, to, to keep himself up right. Yeah, there he goes now. He grabs a hold of him and gets back onto his feet. But uh, I think the best Dow can hope for. Here we go again. Yep, see, down he goes up again. Did, did well to regain his feet there. Yeah, he did well. A lot of heart there, Dow, to pull himself back up from that one. Well, it's been a, a really gritty performance from Daho. All the way, things have been going against him. The tide has been going against him from very early in the fight. But he stopped his task. Full credit to him. So I hope he manages to survive this round. At least go the distance. I can't see him winning. So then the 12th and final round of this International Boxing Federation World Championship at the Nine Stone Four Limit, super featherweight. And this third defence... By Barry Michael, and he's got. It looks as though he's cut in the last round. But I think he's, he's cut over the right eye of the champion, right at the start of that round. Oh, and he almost caught the referee with that. And Daho giving it all he's got in the last. And this really would be bad luck for Michael if the referee has to call a doctor in. And remember, it happened right at the start of the round. Oh, and a little bit of a wobble there. He's, he's raised a bit of anger again in Michael's fighting, I tell you. See, when he needs it, Michael still has the strength to raise the pace yet again. He's not a lot of trouble with a cut eye. Daho sees himself back into the fight, but Michael just raises the pace and knocks him back out of it again. Two minutes to go. And it looks quite a nasty cut, Jim. There's no way a referee would stop a contest. I think. Well, virtually the eye would have to be hanging out. He's not a bleeder of his blood cut. It looks like quite a long cut, but he doesn't seem to be a bleeder. There's not too much blood coming out of the cut. And he's dictating the action. There's no way the referee would even dream of stopping this one. Well, what an exciting finish. I tell you, there are a couple of guys who wouldn't mind shaking their hands after the saying, hey, this is real gladiatorial stuff there. And uh, Daho's once white trunks have almost turned crimson now. Minute to go. And I tell you, Michael will be counting the seconds now. But as in what rightly says, the referee allowing this to go on, and he's just quickly checking again, I saw there as he looked at Michael. Daho looks totally exhausted here, looks as though one good shot in the chin but would finish it for Daho now, he looks totally exhausted, he's doing well to force himself on here. Half a minute. Oh, what a battle, what a battle. now too late for a knockout because the bell would interrupt the count maybe a slight delay in waiting for the verdict anyway while they collect the papers and what a great fight and they're entitled to hug each other at the finish like that with mutual respect I hope and my heart goes out to both of them uh, really was a great battle Jim all the way through the but there was never a break from the action. Unfortunately for Daho, in my book, Michael always was the boss, always is that little bit stronger, always forcing the pace, keeping Daho under pressure. Full credit to Daho, he put up a tremendous performance, but I can't see him with any hope at all of getting a verdict here today. Michael's still the champion as far as I'm concerned. Well, Daho's manager, Jack Trickett, there, looking pleased with himself, but I think he's, he's pleased that it went the full distance and... Uh, as the co-promoter, it was a great fight for the customers and indeed the uh, ITV viewers.
Well, there it is, uh, a clear-cut verdict there, and uh, quite good scoring, 116 to 112 on two cards, and 118 to 110 on the other. So congratulations all round then, and I tell you, now you can hear the chat of Barry Michael. Barry, that was a rough old scrap in there, wasn't it? It certainly was. He proved to be a very tough, difficult opponent. Uh, he, he proved a dead set worthy contender. He took me right down the stretch. I thought I was going to wear him out, but he hung in there. I hurt him with a lot of body shots, but he hung in there. Yeah. How did you manage to hold in there for 12 rounds? Well, you were covered in blood from about the third round. Yeah, I've been bleeding. I've got a bit of cut on my nose before the fight, and he was bleeding all the way through. But he came out with a true champion, you know. I'm really sorry, all the fans. You know, I've done my, more than my best, but he's a better man than I am. You had I'm, terrific support here, didn't you? Yes, you know, thanks to everybody to be here. I'm really sorry that I've done more than my best. When he fought Cadell again, 18 months later, and lost, what went wrong there? Well, I blame the television for that. <laughs> we was in the ring and he was... He was really powering up to go, and he was sort of digging as though he was digging a grave for Pat Cowdell in the centre of the ring, and Pat wasn't looking too happy about things. And I think we were in the ring for 10 minutes because of the time factor. And in that time, his adrenaline went down, his coordination went down, he'd lost his temper, he was barking at the television, but he wanted the fight to go on, and... Uh, he was a highly strung sort of a lad, and he just didn't put it together. But he did fancy his chances on beating Kaudo, even though, again, he wasn't in anything like the shape he should have been. So, this is really looking bleak for Naho. Still full of heart, there we go. Yeah, he looks like stopping him in the ninth. He's got all the courage in the world, Naho, but he is rocking the whole time now, and Kaudo knows it. Nothing coming back from Daho at all, they're just all one-way traffic. Minute to go in the ninth. And yes, it's, well, as one-sided as an avalanche at the moment. This is where, with Cowdell's experience, they should be showing Daho a little faint before he throws. He's allowing Daho to survive because he's getting too close, as he is now. There it is, it's all over. And two minutes 35 I made that of the ninth round. What a comeback by Pat Caldwell. When the fight I was with, you know, we were all the best of friends. And I admired him for being such a good fighter, you know what I mean? And he's a credit to the game. You blew up tonight, unlike you being so strong. Thank you very much. It's just one of them days. It was his day today. I'm really sorry today, but he was his day today. And it's all depend on the day. OK, Naship is a great fight to watch. Thank you very Not much. for you, though. Thank, Thank you very you. much. It wasn't to be Daho's day in his next fight. A gashed head ended his British eliminator against Pat Doherty and ruined Najib's chances of regaining his old crown. However, the fighters' paths would across again only seven months later, in May 89, this time for the Commonwealth lightweight title. What do you recall of the Commonwealth lightweight fight with Pat Doherty? Whew, it was a bloodbath, wasn't it? It was the main support to Barry McGuigan fight. Um, again wasn't entirely fit really wasn't f and after the third or fourth round i didn't think he was fancying it too well and he kept looking at the referee because thought he was one tough guy and he came back to the corner and said if you look at that referee once more when you come back to the corner there'll be nobody here now get out and fight and he went out and he brought the whole of the G-Max up. Everybody in the place was stood up. It was one of the most exciting fights I've seen. Round 10 of a scheduled 12 then for the Commonwealth Championship at lightweight. In the 8th, it looked like Daho could be on his way out. And then in the 9th, for the moment, it looks like Doherty was on his way out. Now then. Is it all going to rest on these last rounds? Well, Daho has always been the one who's been prepared to, to raise the pace. He came back and had a good round. And uh, again, he's trying to get hold of the fight again. 
certainly never is there anything wrong with Dahu's courage. does go 12 referee rafferty makes the decision there are no judges in the commonwealth championships broke the lights. Even the referee's face has got some splattering of blood on now, don't I haven't seen that for a long time. Neither has he. He thinks he's still fighting or Billy Rafferty. relentless really isn't it ten rounds of this so punishing yeah well I suspected into the, the same slot as the previous battle I thought it wasn't going to hot with the they're really shaking again but Dark well, is in serious trouble the way he's going down there yeah but it takes a lot to put this man down they're telling him to get up eight and he, he timed it well he's sensible enough to go down there he didn't mind admitting that he'd been caught in the tenth round then They say the Dahu would be thinking now if only that had happened earlier in the round. Jim? Yeah, well, now that really is a knockdown. When, when a fighter takes the punch and then decides of his own free will that he has to, to take a trip to the canvas, then you know it's been a good shot and he's been badly shaken. Look at the punch, the legs. He could have stayed up, but no, over he goes. Now that really, he must have been badly hurt there. There it is again, and uh, he was always looking over to the corner to Gary Davidson there. He was making sure he didn't get up before eight. And uh, he seemed, he was hurt, and yet at the same time in control. The, the, old, the old head of experience there. There it is. Turns away and says, I think I'll need to go down from that one. Round 11. What a hard battle it's been then. Pat Dahadi and uh, Najib Dahu taking him back. He's got just a bit too much grease on the face there and the uh, referee saying, get it off. Fired up now, Reg. Yeah, the crowd are really behind them. They always were, but now they love it. The thought of he could actually do it so late in a fight as this when at one time Jimmy looked like going himself. Well, I think that the eighth round was a turning point in this fight because uh, after eight rounds, somebody had to be prepared to raise the pace and uh, just get right through all the pain. And Dahu was the one who's done that. He said two good rounds at a time and it looked as though he was beginning to go out of the fight. And uh, Doherty badly needs a good round at this point. been a hard fight not only for the fighters Jim but the referees had to work too isn't it on this one <laughs> it's been a hard one for, for the three of them in there another good left hook in Dahl. 
Now he's got time to turn it on now in this round. Oh, there it is again, the delayed action. And he threw a punch at, uh, well, he was touching the end. Davidson's up on the court ring there saying he's hit by a man on the deck. And it's seven, Jimmy's up in the 11th now. It's switching, he's, he's got a cut over his left eyebrow now, uh, Doherty, had below the right and now over the left. It looks like it's going to be stopped in this round, I would have thought. And he's like, no, he shouldn't have got in the ring yet. It's a bit early for the celebrations and the referee's saying we're not ready as Jack Trickett's getting out. And it's box on. <laughs> Well, the manager took a flyer there. He bolted, didn't he, Jim? Now it's all over. Cartwheel from Najib Daho. And now the manager can really cuddle his man, having really come from behind with all the guts in the world to win that one, Daho. And now he can go on to challenge Steve Boyle for the British Lightweight Championship. Well, there it is. Happy exhaustion, they would call that. Joyous scenes for Daho but he was to make only one successful title defence, typically another war of attrition against the confident Canadian, John Kelben. The last round, Kelben looks just the tiniest bit tired as he came out to touch gloves there. And he adopts the same sort of tactics that he's, he's had as his inspiration to try and take this title right from the very start. I think Daho's corner has told him that he's probably in front and just stay clear of trouble in this last round. Calvin now. Must put it all into one big punch if he possibly can. And still, the pattern is the same. Daryl trying to slug it out with the Canadian. Separating them. Well, we were looking for that grandstand finish from Daho, but I just don't think he has the strength to do that. So many times in the past he's managed to pull out that little spot in the last round, but I just don't think he has it tonight. It's all been hard work for Daho tonight. A good punch, just as I'm speaking, a good right hand punch, but uh, Daho still looking very, very tired. Yes, see uh, Calvin still strong on his feet. A few signs that he can land the one big one that would stop Daho at this stage now. And the crowd lift themselves as Daho tries desperately to Slap it, slug it out toe to toe with Canadian John Carver. Now oh, we're inside the last 10 seconds of this fight. And there is the bell, and Billy Rafferty unhesitatingly announces to everybody that Najib Daho has retained his Commonwealth lightweight title. Carl Crook was the man to succeed Daho as Commonwealth champion, relieving him of the title in 1990 and beating him in a return match. The end of a long, hard career for a distinguished fighter and a memorable man. We had a very, very close affinity to serve us and we were both loyal to one another. 
And yeah, it was a very, very sad loss, not just to me, but I think to boxing and to the many fans that he had. When you think about him now, does it make you want to, to laugh or cry? I just laugh mostly, but I, I do get sad that he's not, he's not around, you know, get sad at the death, but I only laugh because every time I met Nadji, his, his eyes were always dancing and he was, he was such a character. A lovable rogue. Oh, an absolutely fabulous rogue. He was a rogue and a character and a credit to boxing. <laughs>